Dre, I'm going to start off with a, a very simple question. Um, I'd like you to uh, just introduce us a little to your business and to you, your, your involvement in that business. What do you call your brewery? We're called Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company uh, down here in Houston, Texas. It seems to be a natural evolution for craft brewers to start off with some of the, let's call it the lightest style of beers. And then lately, the fashion has definitely been very hoppy beers, uh, juicy, uh, cloudy kind of beers. Is that the, the evolution in your case? It sounds like it. Um, a little bit. So <laughs> Ryan, uh, our brewmaster, he is very against trends. Uh, and so like he refuses to make hazy IPAs. Um, like he, he's he's starting to entertain the thought now because he sees that it's not just a fad. It's it's it has a little niche, just like uh, sours, you know, just like the double IPAs that uh, people kind of gravitate towards. Our first two beers were a you know six percent copper ale and a twelve percent imperial stout that tastes like Christmas, um, both of which are incredibly malty. Uh, but you know the first beer that surpassed eight to thirty six. Uh, in our production was more cowbell, which is our double IPA. The next beer that surpassed that was Crush City. So yeah, we're definitely seeing a trend uh, in popularity with our IPAs. Let's talk about um, more cowbell, because uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to draw the parallel with hops and the love-hate affair that craft brewers have with using hops in their operations. There's a whole lot of challenge around the cost of hops, the yield loss because of high hop beers. Is that some of the experiences that you, you guys have to wrestle with on a daily basis as well? Contracting hops, um, you know, locking in prices. You know, there's things that you can do uh, to mitigate that, but uh, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that every brewery struggles with because, you know, hops fluctuate, they're a commodity. You can't always contract the hops that you want. Um, and, even, and if you can, they're <laughs> too expensive. And so you have to find alternatives or just change your recipe to work with the hops that you know that you're going to be able to get at a, a decent price. That brings you inevitably to having conversations about alternative technologies to uh, give you some of that flexibility. And you, you're saying you're trying to you're trying to avoid getting yourself into difficult situations. And, and inevitably, it's going to bring us to the conversation about hop oil. You mentioned that you guys discovered and watch a presentation at the Crab Brewing Conference. Um, what did that trigger in your operations for you? How, how did you guys uh, make this, made the decision to start exploring hops oil or hop oil as an, as an option for your business? Yeah, so we were looking at uh, extending our shelf life, um, like the freshness of, of the beer uh, in the can, uh, which was one of the, one of the things that had, was mentioned in that presentation. Uh, we we're looking at potentially cutting down on our, our hop usage, but we're also looking at, you know, a better quality beer. We went to the, the CBC, saw the presentation, we're like, this is addressing a lot of the concerns that we had for our beer. Let's try it out. And so we reached out, we got some samples, uh, did some titrations and, and some, some taste testing, tried it out in a batch or two. Both the sales team and the production team tried the liquid and they liked the improvements that we saw. And so we, over time, have just been honing in our use of it and have come to enjoy what it does in, in our IPAs. Figuring out which one you want to use, right, or if you want to use one, uh, I think is a really big question that uh, you know, some people may may cringe at you know trying to put an oil into their beer. And in, in the, in the SOP that was given to us was extremely helpful. You have to clean and, and do the things you normally would have to do. Um, it's just a it's a different product that you have to work in. But once you get used to it, it's just like any other process. Technical difficulties are more the learning the process and implementing it than it is actually using it. Are you using more hop oil in existing brews than you did in the past? So uh, has it been used as a substitute for, for oil on existing beers? Yeah, so we, we built it into the recipe in both our More Cowbell and our Crush City, which are our two uh, year-round IPAs. It seems like you're in support of hop oil because you said you've seen success for the oil in your brand. If you have to take a, uh, just a review on that success, 
um, initially the objectives that you had was to improve your taste and your shelf life to uh, address some of the yield concerns. The answer is, have you succeeded in doing that using hop oil? Uh, the first part, yes. The, the, the freshness and the, the overall quality of the beer, I, I, do, I do think uh, hops oil has helped with that which is why we're still using it, right? <laughs> and it never hurts to try things, right? I mean, that's why, you, that's why you homebrew. That's why you do research and you see what other people are doing. And then you're like, oh, let's do that and see what, what it does for us. Do the proper test, right? Don't just throw it in a glass and, and be like, huh, this is too aromatic or this didn't work enough. Like, look at your dosing, look at, you know, the base beer that you're using, you know, do blind taste tests get other people's palates on it that you can trust. You know, all that stuff will help you get to an answer that should be the right answer. Um, you know, for, for your particular beer, maybe one hop oil works and the other one doesn't. Maybe none work, but it works for another beer. Never hurts to ask. <laughs> Worst they can say is no. <laughs>